Hi, everyone. This is Nima Dogbandin with Jirasi LLP. We're the general counsel for American Association of Private Lenders. We've recently become aware of legislation uh, which is being proposed in California that has significant impacts to our industry. So let me tell you about what that is and what's going on here. So the bill is called the California Speculation Act. So the reason this is coming about was that California Association of Realtors published a report in which they stated that 51% of the purchases that occurred in Q3 2021 were purchased by investors. The national average is 19%. So the state legislature is concerned that your average person is not able to buy a property in California and they're getting uh, purchased out at, 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 in the market by these investors uh, prohibiting your average person to be able to buy properties, and they're also increasing the prices of the properties, further um, preventing people from being able to purchase properties here in California, further exacerbating our affordability crisis here. So this legislation is meant to try to curb that, and we'll talk about why it's not really the right legislation or great legislation to do it. So first is, what is it? So um, starting over here, um, if this goes into effect, uh, in January of 2023, this is what, when this will go into effect, it will create a 25% capital gains tax or up to a 25% capital gains tax for any person who buys a property and sells the property in less than seven years. And it applies to all residential real estate. This could be a multifamily property. It could be a single family. It could be a duplex. As long as it's residential property and it was purchased and it was sold less than seven years later, regardless if it was a developer, if it was you know an average person buying their, their next home, their second home or their third home, um, their primary residence even, if they purchased this and then they sold it within seven years, there's a sliding scale. And in the first three years, it's 25%. And each year after that, it'll go down a little bit, but up to an additional 25% capital gains tax, in addition to any sort of federal capital gains tax that is now due, um, is, is would be applied in the loan transaction, or sorry, would be applied in the transaction here. And so um, uh, this would, again, affect all purchasers, um, regardless of whether it was an individual or a corporation, uh, makes no difference if you're actually an investor. So that's the first thing you need to understand. So what happens with the actual money that they're raising here? Well, they're going to create what they call a speculation recapture community reinvestment fund. And the funds that go in there, when you actually read through the legislation, this is the really crazy part. Only 30% is actually allocated to reduce or create affordable housing. Um, that's very strange um, if this purpose of this bill is to create affordable housing. Further, they don't actually see what they're going to do with the 30% or how they will create affordable housing other than the cities, we're going to create a fund to create affordable housing. You might wonder, well, where's the other 70% going? Up to 10% for just purely administrative fees. Um, and then you have uh, allocations to school districts as well as to public transportation, which again, have nothing to do with or will help curb the affordable housing crisis we have here in California. So where are we at with this legislation? Because it's a tax measure, California requires that two thirds of the legislators approve of the bill. And so generally speaking, that's very hard. Unfortunately, in California, we already have more than two thirds of our legislators of one party. They're all Democrats here in California. And so what that means is that we currently have 31 of 40 of our senators that are Democrats, and we have 60 out of 80 of our assembly members who are Democrats, meaning that we would actually need defections at least four in the Senate and at least uh, six in the assembly for this bill not to pass. The bill was drafted last week, uh, on March 8th, and so it's still very much in the early stages, which means that we really need to mobilize fast. We need to mobilize now. There will be links in the description of this video on how to do that, uh, but we're going to need your efforts to be able to fight this. The biggest issue we have here, which is we don't have a problem with affordable housing. It's a great thing, and it needs to happen, and we're 100% uh, uh, for that. This bill doesn't do any of that. Right? There's no actual direct relationship to how this will, will reduce the amount of people purchasing property or who, the, who, who isn't purchasing it. Because ultimately, what will happen for most people who buy and hold for short term, all they're going to do is they're going to instead purchase these properties, 
hold them as rental properties, and then jack up rents on renters. That's all that's going to happen. It doesn't actually do anything to create or, or uh, create a housing stock. Uh, and California has been surprisingly very good recently in terms of trying to create affordable housing through ADUs and other measures out here. This bill doesn't do that. Um, well-intentioned, just poorly executed. And so it's one of those issues in which we will need to mobilize quickly, and we're asking for your support in doing so. Please join us.